Right, so uh, this is my lining fa fabric, okay, that I'm going to use. Uh, I did, did I show you? I don't know. Uh, yeah. Whoop. Just lost my microphone. Pop that back on. Um, I'm going to, the, I had a choice of a few really, but this is a Lewis and Irene fabric, and I think this is the one I'm going to use. Uh, I could use this as the lining, but this is expensive. And, uh, this is not, uh, this, oh, I'm trying to think who makes it now, is it Moda, yeah, it's, uh, a Moda Basics planes, it, uh, you know, again, it's not cheap, it's pure cotton, but it's not as expensive as the Lewis and Irene. So uh, I I do tend to use planes on my uh, lining interior. So here we go. Uh, right, what's how do we make it fit any machine? So the first thing is take a tape measure and measure across the machine. Now, if I measure it accurately, it's twelve inches. This one, but you see here. I got my sticky out uh, little uh, USB, which is for my mouse that I use with my machine. So I am just moving the tape measure and saying, well, to get it all in nicely, that's 12 and a half. Now, whatever measurement you come up with, you need to add two inches. So that's 14 and a half. Top to bottom, mine is oh, seven and three quarters. So sod that, I'll say eight and add two to it. So ten. So uh, fourteen and a half by ten. That's adding two inches to the dimensions that we need for this. Um, my size, whatever size yours is, and round it up, don't round it down, round it up, okay, add two inches to it. So that's the size that I'm going to cut my outside fabric, my lining fabric, my uh, foam, uh, I'll show you as I'm doing it, and my uh, interlining fabric. All those things I'm going to cut for this size thing at 14 and a half by 10. Okay, so we've established that. Whatever your measurements, add on 2 inches. Round up if it's a, 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 a fraction. Round it up and then add 2 inches. Okay. To cut this, we are going to have to double ruler it. Okay, so what I've got out is my 12 and a half inch square and my uh, six and a half inch ruler. Mm, you could use your six and a half inch long ruler, but then you wouldn't know that you were square. So, uh... I, with the 12 and a half inch ruler, let me just move this up a bit so you can see it. Uh, yeah, I suppose. So I can tell by uh, looking at the edge of it that that's square. So as long as I keep that one square with that one, you know, well, I could move it up a bit more because... At the end of the day, let's not waste fabric. I can then take my cutter, making sure I'm firmly. Oh, see, every time I touch it, it moves. I'm firmly holding everything together.
and cutting off all these scrappy bits I don't want for now. Alright, so that's a straight line. Now, uh, I'm mad about the widths of it because I know I've got enough widths in this. What we want is the height of it. So, first off, let's take the one ruler, which is a 12 and a half inch ruler. Okay, and let's put the one one down in this corner so we know it's correct. And we said we wanted it to be 10 inches high. Okay, now we're not talking about the width now, we're talking about the height. So we said we wanted it to be 10 inches high. So I'm putting that 10 inch mark on that ruler and then using the other ruler again with the one one down in this corner keeping it woo -woo, and making sure I am square so my 10 inch line on both rulers are working together and ooh, 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 keeping that together I'm going to take away uh, the excess fabric. This is what they call the two ruler method. Now, having got something that I know is uh, 10 inches wide, we want the length of it, or the width of it, if we're looking at it this way, the width of it, we want to be 14 and a half. This is my measurements. Obviously, you need to equate this to what you have measured. Okay, so uh, I am looking at uh, if I use this one as my one one in this corner. So, you know, first off making sure my line this side and this side is equated to the fabric I will just I don't know whether this is in camera or not no I think it is a minute <coughs> no I can't let's bring it up the table right so uh, making sure that my lines are straight with this ruler I just want to cut off any, you know, oh, didn't do that very well. Cutting off any scragglers, right? So now I can bring it down. So I got a straight line to work with. Okay, so having, uh, let, me, let me bring it back down the camera. So putting that right back on my 12 and a half, I need uh, uh, two inches, right? So I'll move my, how can I, I need to explain this to you. I'll move my uh, ruler up. Take my second ruler with the one one in this corner and bring it down because I want that's twelve and a half. I want fourteen and a half. So I'm putting the two inch line on the edge of that fabric, bringing the other ruler down. All right. 
and lining it all up so it's straight along this edge. It takes, you know, you need to take a little time with this and work it out. So, two inches on this ruler and 12 and a half inches on the big ruler. So now I can stick my hand firmly on the big ruler. Uh, I hope this is still in camera. And then take a line across there. Yeah. So what I'm left with after using the two rulers is a piece that is uh, 10 by 14 and a half. Okay. So if I put it around the other way and take a small ruler and say, well, hang on a minute then. Let's measure that. Okay. And that's one. What does it end up as? Fourteen and a half. Okay, and then take it sideways and say, well, what is that? Oh, it's ten. So that's how you make uh, using a two-ruler method the size that you want. Now, if I get my laptop back up and kind of plonk it in the middle, yeah? You can see I've got at least an inch this way, this way, this way, this way, which is our added extra two inches. All right. So I cut one piece of lining. I'm now going to cut uh, another piece of lining, and I can use this as a template. Okay. Having cut one, which is right, and double checked it with this ruler that it is right. I can now use this as a template and cut the exterior and the other piece of lining to be accurate with this. Okay, Dave, so uh, I'm hoping this is all in camera shot. I'm making sure that my top line is straight on my fabric. I have checked out the way that the pattern goes, so I know that that is straight on the bottom. Uh, uh, straight on the sides. Okay, and I've also written number one using a... Um, what would you call these things? Um, a friction pen. I called this number one because I know this is correct. Uh, I will, I've already cut another lining piece using that as a template. So now I cut two uh, external pieces of this fabric. So uh, I put a weight on there because it's quite a lot of fabric so I don't want it to fall off the table. I'm getting out my cutter, which has got, oh, now what's that called? It's not a normal blade. It's called a titanium blade. It's a new blade that they brought out, which lasts much longer than the usual blade. And in a moment, I'll think about what it's called. Now, when you put your ruler on, you need to make sure that you're not taking a fraction off your template piece. You need to make sure. Okay. So I'm making that cut. And then, yeah, that's good. Uh, I've got to still keep the weight to hold the fabric. And I'm bringing it up as close as I can. And making that cut and I can now let the fabric 
again. <gasps> See, I did, I did cut a fraction there. It's not, not that much of a bother because we are allowing ourselves that extra inch. But you see what I mean about keep trying to make sure that everything. I'm going to turn it around. That everything ends up the same size. Okay, so I'm just going to. Oh. Dip. Two. Oh. Oh, lips. Yep, no. See, I cut fractions off of that as well. Which I didn't want to do, but there are any fractions. Any fractions. Right, so now I got one outside piece and now I'm gonna cut the second outside piece. So I am using uh Bosal in our form, okay, as my foam. Now, you can get Bosal, which has got one-side diffusible or double-side diffusible. I don't like it. Uh, it. It's just my preference because whenever I've used an iron-on Bosal, an iron-on foam, it wrinkles the exterior fabric. So I would rather use uh, Bosal that I just do an 8-inch round stuff. But each to our own, if you're absolutely brilliant at uh, um, fusing stuff, no problem. But I am not. Oh, now, you see, I'm opening a pack here right now. And as you can see... Uh, well, as you can see as I open it up, there's lots of creases in it. Now, if you take uh, an iron and not touching the bosal, especially if you're using a foam, uh, fusible one, just hover the iron above it, all of the creases will come out. I'm going to do that and come back to you so you can see that these creases I'm showing you now will not be apparent in a minute. All right, so I've just steamed this now. So I'm, you know, moving it at the mat. So you can see that all those creases have gone. If I, hold on, let me just fold this in half so I can bring it up. Now you can see uh, the bit that I haven't, um, steamed yeah still got creases yeah but let me just bring this bit down there was a crease here and through the middle but as i said just steaming it not touching it just steaming it brings it all back up like it's like new okay so now what i need to do is to take my number one piece which was this one, and cut out the foam. Now, uh, if you were, I've got to tell you this now, uh, if you were going to take an external piece, yeah, and quilt it, then you need to make the actual external piece and the foam an inch bigger because it will shrink with quilting. I'm not going to quilt mine, but if you are, then make it another inch bigger. So plus three inches and then cut it back to size after you've quilted it. All right, so, so far, We've got two bits of outer fabric, two bits of foam, bosal, soft and stable, uh, can't think of any others. two bits of lining, and two bits of 
woven fusible interfacing like SF101 but mine isn't mine is a cheaper make uh, I'll put a link to it underneath so I get it from uh, Empress Wells it's brilliant uh, so that's where we are at the moment all right so where I've just gone to the iron and fused the uh, back of the lining pieces with that woven interface okay uh, and yeah I did trim it so they're all ready to go uh, the two of them together and what I'm going to say to you now is we need to round the corners now I put up on our Facebook group the uh, this template I've done it twice so in case uh, you know you uh, have a problem you've got at least two of them okay so what we need to do is cutting outside the dark line so cutting outside the dark line uh, we need to just Cut out one of these shapes. There's another one in case you get it wrong. Now, uh, on the shape, uh, this one inch square, you it, just make sure that you have printed it out at 100%. Uh, take a one inch ruler and just check that that is a one inch square. So then you know you've got it the right size. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is I am going to put one on top of the other as these pieces should be the same size. Okay, so I am, yeah, just making sure that they are together and are the same size. And I'm just going to put a pin in, so or two pins in actually, so that they don't move while I'm doing this next bit okay so now uh, <coughs> I want to make sure that the outside line of these pieces are touching and I'm lucky enough I got a small this is a 25 centimeter cutter which allows you to do more uh, easier rounds than using a big one. So while I, I hold that down, and I will just literally, whoop, using my cutter, I think my cutter wants sharpening. I've got a video on sharpening cutters if you want to go and look for it. Oh, no, that's not material scissors. That's a material scissor. I just make that more uniform. And on all four corners, this is why I've pinned it together. Okay. Lining it up. I'm going to take a much deeper cut now. That's better, isn't it? Oh, it's still moved for me. A little sod. But anyway, as you can see, I'm just rounding the edges, all of the edges. That's one.
There we go. Right, rounding the edges on the two lining pieces. And I'm going to do the same thing with the foam and the exterior pieces. And then we're going to eight, because mine is non-fusible. So then we're going to eight of an inch around the edge. Uh, so one to the other. All right. So I have uh, rounded my edges on the outside fabric and the foam. I have used a little bit of um, fiber five spray to adhere this gently, okay. But to make it even more secure now, oh, hang on a minute, I need to change my, uh, I've just put Orofel 30 weight in the top, <coughs> change my needle to a construction needle, which I use Smets, um, Smets what, what are they called? Uh, uh, I'm going to say it by 705, number 90s, so Smetch 90s. Um, uh, I've still got the same bottom thread in, bottom line. And I last thing I need to do is just to whip off. I got a, I've, I've changed over now to uh, working in normal uh, lock stitch mode. It's no longer embroidering so what I actually need let me put my embroidery piece up there what I actually want now uh, because I am working on a uh, thick material I want oh, yeah I do want I'm going to change it all I know you may not like this but here I go right so I need to change that panel to my eye position panel okay which is as you can see a single I don't know if you can see it but it's a single hole to the to the left of me okay uh, and then I am now gonna pop in <coughs> it's asking me what am I going to use with it so uh, again I am um, no I am now going to attach an AccuFeed. I don't know what you may not be, but it's, it's like a walking foot. But with Janome, Elna, and people like that, we use what they call an AccuFeed system. Now, these walking feet work in, in two directions. It, well, all the top and the bottom, okay? So, uh they're really good and accurate and HP means high precision and I'm just popping this one on and the reason why I'm using a walking foot now is because I'm going through foam now I just want it to be uh, on a normal uh, stitch straight stitch but I want the width of it uh, sorry yeah no yeah the length of the stitch to be come up to three okay so I want it to be quite a long stitch because there's a lot of fabric for it to get through, depths of fabric, plus, 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 um, at the end of the day, um, this is kind of a basting stitch. So needle down. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Uh, so I am now going to stitch roughly an eighth of an inch. Oh, come on, Jack, fasten that. I'm turning, lifting and turning. Oh. My 
And even though I stuck it down, my fabric is shifting. I get back round to where I started where I'm going to cut my threads okay so that's the one piece basted all the way around the outside now if you're using fusible foam you may not wish to do this uh, but I think it's always a good thing to do because when we get further into construction you may find the edges of fabric start to lift up or shift so I do do this with everything all right we're ready now to cut if you like the gusset of uh, the bag okay uh, now you need to work out your own uh, measurements for this again because this is a uh, kind of a uh, made to suit um, bag uh, with my little laptop my uh, width was 14 and a half and my height was 10 so I want to cut 24 and a half adding those two measurements together and I want them to be one and a half inches wide. I folded my exterior fabric uh, in four so I've got the entire width so I know that's too much for me but uh, I, I don't mind because I, I know I will incorporate it in another design anyway but you could cut yours uh, more uh, rigorously um, not using my method the reason why i like to do it and i'm using here uh this cutter is a uh, uh wait a minute what's it called uh, stripology xl ruler which i know quite a few of you in this group have bought before because it's brilliant for cutting strips but also brilliant for cutting widths that we want um so now i'm just going to get out my cutter and the first thing I'm going to do is take, on the 0 0 line, is to take a slither off the edge. Okay, and I mean a slither. All right, so that has given me a nice clean cut edge. And I want it to be one and a half inches wide. So I am just going to cut one and a half inches. All right, I will then be cutting that, oops, did quite get that, a minute, just move that along a moment, didn't quite get that cut, I wasn't pressing, right, so that's one and a half inches wide, now what I will do is subcut that so that I've got uh, 24, okay, 24 and a half, which is what I want, that's my one and a half inch wide by 24. So that's one thing. The other movement, this is for the base of the bag. But while I'm here and while I've got this marvellous thing out, I am going to continue and I am going to cut because I want... Actually, I'm going to change it because that's going to be a waste of material. I'm going to change it down to the other end where I knew because I only want 14 inches by 4 inches wide. So. Excuse me while I just move all my fabric around, keeping it in in that fold. Okay, I'm gonna keep it in that fold and bring it back and over the edge so that you can see the other end of my fabric is uh, not a full width, but it's going to be long enough. So I'm propping my ruler back on. I'm going to give myself a one one cut with everything straight, okay? Give myself my bone artwork. The thing is, 
I have had this room here so long now, I've got a few divots in it. So I just give myself a straight cut and then I could put my black line on that straight cut. And then for the handles, I'm going to want them four inches wide, okay? So I'm going to cut one at four and one at eight. Now these are going to be for my handles, right? So we'll put that to, to one side for a moment. Uh, where I can get rid of this uh, board now because... Uh, also, we're going to need it out of the other four fabrics. Now, the other four fabrics is the uh, foam, all right? Oh, I've got a lot of foam here, right? The foam, let me just plop a weight on it. The foam. So, let's uh, first off make this. And I'll take my small ruler and I'm going to cut off because obviously I do not want any salvage. So I'm going to cut that off and I am then going to measure. This is obviously this ruler is 24 and a half inches. Okay, so I know I don't want to stretch it, but I know that there where my finger is is 24 and a half inches. So I am going to cut that across there. That's actually, I've got this bit left over. That's fine. So now having done that, uh, plop that back on there. I can now use this as a template. You want one piece, just one piece. And I can do it along the straight edge. So I've only got to cut one edge. All right, let's so make sure that I am nice and neatly, always trim it, I am nice and neatly aligned. I, I yeah, I saw it's much, you can't see it, can you? You bring it up the table. Right, so I've just taken that, that template that I've made, okay, and I'm moving it towards the edge as much as I can, without stretching it, and then I'm going to cut out of the foam. You may want to use a ruler for this. I'm a bit cavalier. But then I've been doing it a short while. Right, so there we are. Let's get rid of the foam. So now I've got an outside piece and a foam piece. So now I need to do exactly the same using this as a template. Or, in actual fact, I could use this as a template because it's more sturdier. I need to do it at the lining fabric and the woven interfacing SF104 from Pelham or uh, equivalent, if, but woven interfacing. Okay, so we end up with the exterior and the interior, which is made out of four pieces. You can see here I just bought it back from the um, uh, machine. I've done an 8 inch all round on the exterior fabric to the foam and I have ironed the um, lining to the uh, um, woven mesh or SF101 uh, for the lining piece. So they're ready to go now. Remember those uh, pieces I cut up four inches wide previously? Uh, well, I've now um, cut them back down to being 14 inches long by four inches wide. All right. And they need to have uh, the, the, the woven interfacing attached to them. So I'm going to get out my interfacing and cut uh, some pieces that need to go on the back of this. This is for the handles. These are the handles for the machine. For, sorry, for, for the back. Get my uh, four inch um, by 14 inch pieces and go to the iron and fuse those two pieces together. All right, I've just come back from 
the sewing machine uh, and as you can see uh, there's a fuse balloon facing on the back I did also uh, fold it in half and put a line to work with so that we can do as I did for this top one and bring up the bottom to the center line okay I'm just uh, finger pressing it for a moment oops not, not very well but I am okay and then the top to the center all right I suggest you iron this top to the center like this and then when we've done that you fold the whole thing over into four so now this strip is only one inch wide I need to interject here because what I forgot to say was uh, that you need to fold in the ends quarter of an inch too otherwise you're gonna have rough edges okay which I've already done with this one and the next thing we need to do now is to go around and do eighths of an inch across well I will do it down both sides and both ends <laughs> 